Eric the Wrench here. Okay, we're driving down the road. New engine, new wires under the hood, new alternator, starter, everything. All of a sudden, she shuts off. We got fuel. No spark. What do we do? Okay, all of a sudden, we're stuck in the side of the road. We check our fuel filter. It could probably be changed, but it's full of fuel. So we open up our air cleaner lid. Okay, we could pump the throttle and squirt gas. We're getting fuel. So we must not be getting spark. Let's pull a plug wire and we could either stick a screwdriver in the end of it and hold it near a ground source while someone cranks it or maybe you have one of these nifty little guys. She's cranking a little slow because we've already worn the battery down. I'm going to put the charge on her in a minute. Okay, so we'll come over here. We'll pull off this distributor wire, the main one. Okay, and we'll, same deal. We still have no spark, what do we do? Now we're assuming it's the coil maybe. So, we disconnect the wires that go to our coil. You can see here that we will take our ohm meter set on 200. And we have 1.5. Now we'll set the ohm meter to 20k, thousand, 20,000, okay. And we will test in here to either side. From primary to secondary coil, we have the wrong number. We really want about 10.5 there, so this is a bad coil. Okay, here's another coil. Cross from here to here, into here to here, we have 9.9. So a little under and from terminal to terminal on here we could see we have a bad winding those are two different coils with two different problems okay there we go 1.6 anyway that's good now we'll go on our higher setting to 20k you could see and here and here look at perfect 10.5 10.7 there that's perfect here so our coils good what does that mean And yes, I did hit myself right in the face with this axe. So, that's why my head stitched up. So, let's test the control module. We'll hook up one test lead to our negative and the coil, and one test lead to ground. When we turn the key on, that should go to about 6 volts this being a 12 volt bulb so it'll go from dim to bright and uh, half voltage and every time that this little pickup detects the tooth spin past it disrupts the magnetic field triggers the control module to allow this to ground and shoot a spark just like the points points that break open and allow the coil to ground out 
which allows the other coil to discharge a spark. That control module will either be on the outside or inside the distributor underneath the backing plate. And we see that that test light comes on the half voltage and it does not pulse 12 when it goes past. When we turn the key on, almost six volts. No good. So, just like you will notice that it was registering about three volts from the six, that's because the meter can't switch fast enough so it was showing the in-between reading. If it was good, it would be showing about 9 as an in-between reading. If we rotated it slower, it would have been going back and forth from 6 to 12 about. And like ours is going from 6 to 0 because it is bad. Let's take a closer look. Here's our rotor, dust cap. Okay, so if this was points, you would see points here in a condenser. And you wouldn't have these teeth. There would be a little cam to push the points open and close. So you could see that the pickup is on the tooth. That should be reading 12. We loosen it to adjust it to see if that's it. But we have no fluctuation at all, just like as if in it was open. Meaning the pickup isn't picking up anything, so it's only getting that 6 volt reading about. Okay, we should also be able to stick a screwdriver in between two points here, and that should change the field, but it's not. Okay, if it was out, we could turn it by hand, or we could also come in here, loosen our distributor hold down, of course, this always happens right after we get it timed in the sweet spot. You may want to mark it exactly where it is. This is about the perfect position for it to be stuck. Of course, granted that the rotor is timed. Anywho, you see the battery's dying, that's why the voltage is going down. But as I turn it, it goes past. That should have been going back and forth a couple times, but it's not. It's no good. Now we're going to try our luck tracking down the original part. They also make a Pertronics kit that will slip over here and a new piece will go in with its own built-in little module and all that. Presto light, it would be a 1483 or 1483A if you had the points distributor. Oh. Now let's pop this little clip. A little magnet next to it as I was pushing it off just in case. We don't want to drop that in there and we just wiggled and popped it off and we'll get that screw too. Okay. And that's a vacuum advance. Let's test it. Holds. And bring her out. Completely melted. Just kidding. That's a coating. This could be a breaker plate. It would come out the same way. Okay, see those weights in there? Those are the advanced weights that throw themselves out. See? Centrifugal advance. The vacuum advance pulls on it as well that we just pulled out. That grabs the plate and advances the actual backing plate itself there a little bit. And that does its thing too. Those springs could wear 
and uh, whatever. We'll clean it up in here, lube it up, and we'll get our new uh, backing plate, whether it be points or not. The only other difference that would be from points, a ballast resistor, because the coil only wants to run at 9 volts. The resistor has a bypass, which would be the R terminal on your starter solenoid, which will bypass the resistor and give it a full 12 volts just to get her started. Then it will run through the regular key on going through the ballast resistor, then to positive on the coil. Okay, once she's in, we'll screw this piece down and put it in its little slot. And we will adjust it with a matchbook or a feeler gauge in between the teeth to about these two screws don't need to come out until we change the plate. Once we pull that screw and that screw on the side out and remove our vacuum advance, we could slide this over and get at that screw and that's how we'll separate the backing plate from our unit. See how that's discolored around that what's likely a little resistor that's burned up in there. Open up our ice dragon go to duckduckgo b-u-z-z-z-e-d dot info here we have all of our links to different sites Here's our link to Presto Light, who no longer makes distributors or parts for them. So, <laughs> wires. Now we'll go to our wiring diagram for a distributor system with the control module gold box mounted externally. If we go back, check out here. As you can see here in this Holly distributor that goes with the gold box, this one's for a four cylinder. Once again, we have our reductor and we have our magnetic pickup. This one only has two wires because our control module is located in the gold box. Works the same way though. Some the light will pulse on when it's in between and some of the light will pulse on when it's past. It all depends. On our points or our Presto light, we will have positive on the coil coming from the battery or the ignition on switch and another wire going to the red wire to our distributor. Then the ground wire off of the coil will not go that way it will only go to the black wire or brown wire on our distributor the distributor itself grounds out through the camshaft like I said if it was points there would be a resistor in between the positive coil wire and the battery that gets bypassed when it starts off of the starter solenoid at the R terminal only when the contact plate is engaged there. So there you have it guys, Americ the Wrench with all right and buzz.info. And as you can see here, the standard part number is a uh, double the price of the Protronics module. Stay tuned, please like and subscribe. Happy wheeling.